Yep. So seems we are live now. And uh, one more time, welcome everyone uh, for the next uh, September edition of uh, In Mind VC pitching sessions, uh, where we have really great proactive uh, VC companies investing in blockchain, crypto, DeFi, NFT startups, and uh, six selected projects uh, among uh, hundreds that applied. Uh, uh, the strongest ones that are ready to raise money from the VCs and uh, uh, ready to get started. Uh, as usually, before starting the session, I invite investors. <laughs> Sorry, my dog uh, supports uh, me in introduction. I uh, want to invite investors to give a very, very short introduction of your investment focus. Uh, just explaining uh, what uh, startups are you looking at and uh, what are your investment criteria. And uh, I want uh, to give the word uh, to Michelle uh, Song, uh, who is uh, the partner at Lucid Blue Ventures, uh, the partner of our very good friend Charlie Hu, who usually uh, participates, I think, in all our sessions this year. Uh, so Michelle, please, the, the word is yours. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so we, um, Lucid Blue, are looking at a lot of uh, interesting sort of DeFi, NFT, and, and GameFi projects, uh, a specific focus on GameFi uh, and applying NFT technologies and DeFi technologies to be able to uh, uh, convert traditional Web 2.0 games into the Web 3.0 uh, world. But and beyond that, I'm actually uh, the institutional partner, so I'm very specifically interested in um, NFT projects and, and De DeFi projects that have sort of, uh, uh, you know, the ability to transition into the more uh, traditional institutional world, right? Uh, you know, as, as digital assets now become regulated and things like that, I'm the partner to help bring these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, digital asset innovation into the institutional space. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And protocol wise, uh, you are agnostic or focusing specifically on the Polygon network projects? Uh, we, we are we are agnostic, yeah. So um, of course we have very special relationships with different ecosystems, such as uh, Polygon, because Charlie uh, is the head of uh, China for Polygon. But we, uh, we we look across the board. Yes. Okay, amazing. Thanks a lot, Michelle, and uh, welcome one more time to join us today. And uh, I want to give the word uh, to another newbie for uh, the in mind pitching session, Lester Lima from X20Y Digital. Uh, Lester, please uh, give just a few words introduction on uh, X21 uh, of your investment focus. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Lester from X21 and I'm from Singapore. So uh, hi to everyone. So uh, just just a very quick intro. Basically, um, we actually inv the investment philosophy is pretty similar to, uh, you know, to Lucy Blue and pretty much as uh, as quite a few guys here as well. I I would reckon, right? Because uh, we look at the current trends, look at the current trends, and also look at the fundamentals of individual projects as well. So basically, uh, in in recent months, we keep a focus on quite a quite a number of projects, basically surrounding the gamify and NFTs and the metaverse projects. You know, uh, that is the so-called in-trend thing, right? And also uh, for the fundamentals, like the evergreen stuff, you know, like DeFi and any other protocol projects that we uh, internally deem to have the fundamentals to, to have the longevity to last and with strong leadership, I think uh, that will be interesting to us. You know, uh, so yeah, so that will be the kind of a quick intro that what we are looking for. Your elevator pitch is amazing. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and no I love problem. your background, Lester. Yeah, it's Taipei. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, please, uh, ladies, I want to invite Asa Hutchinson, who is uh, the managing partner at uh, Pluto Digital VC, uh, to give a brief intro. Asa, welcome. Hi, hi everyone. It's great to be here, um, representing females um, <laughs> in the crypto space. No, um, yeah, Pluto Digital, um, our, our main focus in the space at the moment is obviously um, Web3 projects similar to the other guys. We we're looking for people that, that are going to make a, dis a, a difference in the traditional market. We want to um, bring people to the space that aren't just uh, here for the short haul. We want to we change 
um, the revolution of crypto. And that's what we strongly believe. We're also really keen at the moment on gaming. Um, we've got a load of different things um, in fruition at the moment. We're actually, um, we've created Pluto Labs, which is really exciting for us. And um, we're currently in the modes and the motions of building our own software to reflect um, what it is that we're looking for in the space. So yeah, awesome to be here. Um, I only know a couple of faces, but I'm really interested to, to meet the rest of you after that'd be awesome. Thanks a lot, Asa. It was really good introduction. And I know that Pluto Digital is quite active. Uh, you're in touch with a couple of startups from the previous session and the previous before previous session. So I hope that you will find some good deal flow today as well. I've already seen a couple that I'm really interested and excited about. So yeah, today's going to be good. Okay, thank you very much. And I want to give the word uh, to Alex Emma from Crypto Maria Capital. Many of you already know him because uh, he's also very, very common uh, part participant and usual guest in our sessions. But Alex, please uh, still give a few words about your investment thesis. Yeah, thanks, Nelly. Hi, everyone. I'm Alex. I'm a managing partner of Crypto Maria Capital. So Crypto Maria Capital is global as a fund. We invest a lot in different uh, uh, crypto blockchain projects. Actually, we don't have any specific focus on uh, GameFi or NFT or uh, regulated assets and so on. The key focus for us is a uh, strong team and real ambitious founders and their long-term vision. We usually act as strategic investors where provide a lot of additional value, uh, especially in Asia. We are shareholders of uh, Cointelegraph China. This is Asian branch of Cointelegraph Global. We help a lot to our portfolio companies to be featured there, to attract the users, to build their brand awareness and scale their businesses. We contribute a lot in our portfolio companies. And as usual, now we are happy to participate in your event. Uh, looking forward uh, to see great uh, projects today. Thanks a lot, Alex, for this intro, and thank you for joining us. I know that you have some great news to share with the community soon, but uh, probably uh, you're not ready to share it today, maybe uh, in the next session about uh, your new initiatives in the uh, venture capital sector. Looking yep. forward to it. And uh, last but not least, uh, among uh, the participating uh, um, participants from investment side, uh, I want to introduce uh, Stan Stolberg uh, from uh, ScaleSwap IDO Launchpad, uh, which is not the VC fund, uh, but Stan and Ralph founders. They are both angel investors, and they are also constantly looking for great projects to launch IDO on ScaleSwap. Stan, please. Yeah, hello everybody. Thank you, thank Nelly. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's my uh, third uh, Shark Tank uh, since uh, six months, and uh, um, I am very interested to see new faces, new projects. As an IDO launchpad, we are, let's say, on the stage after the investment was done. So after the private investment, we are helping projects to launch on the free markets uh, and to a skyrocket project so therefore we are the stage after this one but nevertheless uh, it's uh, very important uh, to see the project from very beginning from early stage in order to understand if this is a good match for our community and uh, anyway we are working very close together with in mind with you Nelly. um pleasure to be here yeah, Looking thanks forward. a lot. Thanks a lot, Stan, for this intro. And uh, I'm not good marketer uh, and storyteller, but it's a beautiful story behind that you also uh, scales up pitched on the first, very first uh, yeah. crypto shark tank by mind uh, at the beginning of the year. And since then, uh, really huge progress is done. Uh, but it is, uh, it is also a kind of uh, a baby uh, which was born. <laughs> that's, that's correct. I remember. Uh, indeed, we, uh, you can be proud <laughs> that one of, one of the startups uh, has now real substance. Oh, all of us are proud. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So, and right now, the most sexy part is, of course, the pitches of the startups. And uh, I, before that, uh, two announcements. First of all, um, all our uh, my, uh, today we have uh, Lucid Blue Ventures, a VC from China, 
And uh, other Chinese uh, friends like Water Drip Capital, YBB, and others, they are celebrating a national Chinese holiday and could not join us, unfortunately, but uh, they send you all big greetings and uh, promised uh, to review the recording once they <laughs> get rid of and head over. Uh, so uh, this is one thing. And uh, second, I remind everyone, all the startups will have five minutes pitch. After that, Q&A with investors. And after the session finishes, I will immediately contact all investors and ask for the feedback. And we will start introducing you to each other today or tomorrow, as soon as we get feedback from VCs. So with this, we can start. Uh, and I invite uh, the, um, uh, the first project. Uh, the first project is called uh, Cryptonio from Greece, a uh, wonderful country, and the founder, Luis Hadzis. So Luis, please start your screen sharing. Sure, thank you for having me. Uh, and hello to everyone from Greece. Uh, Great. Yep. Let me just put it in presenter view. Please tell me if you can uh, see my screen. Yes, very well now. Uh, five minutes, okay. don't forget. Starting now. Okay. So thank you for having me again, Nelly. It's great to be here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Cryptonio, the safest and simplest uh, cryptocurrency wallet. So basically, um, the market has a couple of problems custody and recovery. And while exchanges offer a simple way for, um, uh, for users to, to get on board, uh, the reality is that users don't hold their, their, their private keys. And I'm sure you've heard of the phrase, not your, not your keys, not your crypto. On the other end, you know, the in the market, we have non-custodial wallets. And uh, basically, uh, they offer a custody solution. But then, you know, most people have problems managing keys and seed phrases. So it's just uh, a little bit difficult the way it is today. Um, so we solved three basic problems. Asset custody, so we built a non-custodial wallet. Um, we solved key management. Our wallet is completely keyless. And backup and recovery. Basically, we're using facial biometrics to backup and recover users' wallets. Um, so on the custody side of things, um, we use multi-party computing. Basically, we create a key share on the user's device and another one on our servers. Uh, both these key shares are used to, um, to uh, sign transactions. So the user basically initiates um, uh, transactions on his end and his key share along with ours is used to sign any transaction to send crypto out of his wallet. On the, um, on the backup and restore front, we, I think we built a really elegant and simple solution. Basically the user backs up his wallet by scanning his face. We take the key share that's on his device and we encrypt it and back it up to his personal cloud. And on the recovery end, you know, the user just reinstalls the app and scans their face. If there's a match bet with, uh, between the new scan and the one from sign up, basically the wallet is restored. Um, our security model, you know, is distributed on, on multiple levels. So basically, you know, it, we hold one key share, the user holds the other. So that's a distributed aspect of it. And with regards to user authentication, you know, we use 3D biometric face scan. Uh, user has to uh, authenticate with his email address, his personal cloud. And of course, for transactions, sending crypto out of his wallet, we use whatever device-based authentication the user has enabled. Um, we support 20 cryptos, ERC20 tokens, some stable coins. Users can buy, sell, and convert crypto. They can use um, a bank card to buy or a, a, a bank account. Um, we provide users with real time graphs and they can create their own custom alerts. Um, the market, I don't have to preach to the, to the, the people that are in the market, but it's growing at a phenomenal rate, no matter what metric you look at, you know, we've had, um, based on, a on, a, on, a, uh, research from crypto.com, 106% growth in the first six months, users are estimated to be 221 million right now. Uh, you know, crypto transactions, I checked today, we're a little over 93 billion in crypto transactions. The crypto hardware wallet today is around $700 million. I mean, all the numbers are huge and the market's growing more. 
Our business model is pretty simple. We're going to offer a freemium model. Basically, we're going to offer a free version of the wallet that's going to support Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then we're going to have a premium version that's going to support all the coins that we offer and all the features that we offer. Um, we validated this by conducting a survey. Basically, we asked users if they would pay for a wallet like ours, and the response was overwhelming. 60.7% are willing to pay for a wallet similar to ours, and they, they are willing to pay anywhere between five and 12 bucks. Um, the market is, you know, there are all kinds of wallets out there, whether we're talking about hardware wallets or um, exchanges or non-custodial wallets, but we feel that we offer a solution that gives users peace of mind when it comes to safety of their assets and uh, a way to recover them no matter what. Um, with regards to go-to-market strategy, uh, you know, we're going to be targeting early adopters. We're going to be using online and offline channels. Uh, PR and some events. And a, a big part of it also is uh, creating partnerships with uh, cryptocurrency exchanges that have large concentrations of users to give them a better experience. Uh, so far, we had a soft launch in June. We've signed up more than 500 users and our month on month growth has been 250%. I have four seconds to go. <laughs> uh, we have a pretty detailed roadmap for the next three quarters, new features and new assets that we're gonna be supporting. Our team, we have a lot of crypto experience, a lot of startup experience, uh, a couple of exits in the past. Uh, we're looking for 600,000 to grow our team, reach 10,000 users and prepare for the next round. Thank you. I think Thank I was you. 20 seconds <laughs> over the time. I tried to do this as quickly as possible. <laughs> Yes, uh, that, that was a good pitch. Thank you. Thank you. You did a good job. And uh, probably we should do some more educational sessions on what to focus on, because I know you have a lot of information to share. I did. I did. I, yeah, had to, uh, I, I reduced it and still, you know, I was 20 seconds above my time. I know. Sorry, I, know. I tried to. <laughs> it's OK. No, no worries. Uh, so questions from investors, please. Okay, I can start. I can start. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, thank you, Ilias, for the nice speech. It was, uh, I, I think it was good one. So uh, the topic is uh, quite hard to understand what is exactly the USP of your solution. Because we have uh, many, many wallets outside and um, you need to be a bit technical to, uh, to get into this topic. And my question to you, uh, you use, uh, you say, uh, two keys, right? So you split this for the user and one, uh, another key is stored on your server. So, so what happens? We're, yeah, mm -hmm. we're not building a multi-signature wallet. Actually, we built a multi-signature wallet back in 2018. We're employing a technology which is called multi-party computing. It's been around since the mid nineties. Only recently um, it's being used in crypto applications. Actually, there's a few service providers in the market. One was acquired by PayPal, Curve, an Israeli company in April. Um, so we're using this technology and we're, we're this is a zero uh, knowledge proof algorithm. Basically, we're creating two key shares that compute a key. So actually, there is no keys anywhere in the wallet that we've built. And we're doing that. Uh, key generation in a distributed way, and also the signing protocol is completely distributed. So, in never, never anywhere, you know, whether it's generation or signing, are these two keys brought together? The algorithm uses them, computes a key, signs a transaction. Okay, basically, it's an algorithm. It's not the part of, your, of the key what you store on your server, right? There is no key what is stored. So, on there's your two server. pieces of information which are called key shares. One mm -hmm. is stored on our end. One is stored on the user's end. It's generated and stored on the user's end. These are used by the algorithm to compute a key. And what happens if you, for some reason, lose the part of uh, your key? What was yes, on you're your absolutely end? right. So in the roadmap that I wasn't able to go into detail, we're building right now a disaster recovery system that basically is also going to involve an escrow and a trustee that is going to check whether we are still live as a company, and if we're not, then the escrow is going to publish a master key with which we've encrypted our key share and stored on the user's device, which is going to be on a GitHub repository. And if you know we're not there and our, our app scans that there's a valid key on GitHub 
uh, it's going to be able to decrypt our key share on the user's device, and then the user's going to be able to transfer their funds out to any other wallet or service they want. Okay. So actually, uh, this is something that we're working on right now. Got it, got it. No, it's uh, some uh, logical question. Uh, <laughs> consequence. Of course, it's a big um, yeah. But I also saw that you conducted audit by Certic, right? Uh, so ISOs. So, 7021 yeah, so, and so all of the security standards it's what you are looking at right yeah yeah so we're you know we're going to be having our code audited and our entire service audited making sure um you know to help build trust in the minds of users because there's lots of solutions out there there have been lots of scams where people are posting wallets online and disappearing with people's crypto so we want to make sure that you know we are regulated audited and you know checked all every way along the way thank you it's a solid concept so it's uh, understandable it's, uh, um yeah i mean i will leave it to other other investors to ask other questions thank about community and so on and so on about the state but from my side thank you very much all good thank you thanks stan for your questions uh, any more questions from investors for uh, Elias? Yeah, I, I just have a, you know, so so mainly the cell is uh, basically twofold. It's, it's, you know, there's a lot of no, uh, non-custodial wallets, this kind of thing. So it's really just the MPC computation and face rec thing, right? And so, so this, you're basically making a play on the fact that uh, face rec is going to be uh, a more usable solution that's uh, um, more preferable than, um, you know, say the key, the, the seed phrases and, and things like that that everyone else uses. Is that right. roughly correct? Yes, that is absolutely correct. A big part of our solution is the recovery aspect. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. there's 3.7 million Bitcoin stranded and stranded wallets because somebody lost their password, their seed phrase, and, you know, you don't lose your face. And basically, we're also building into the app right now um, a backup face. So even if for whatever reason, you know, I was in an accident and my face was deformed, I'm going to be able to add a, a family member or someone that I trust as a backup face to my wallet. So they're going to be able to recover it, even if I can't. Can you talk about the technology of FaceRec? Is that just commoditize well, all stuff? stuff we, do, or? we do something which is called 3D liveness. So we are able to detect even if somebody has a high uh, res uh, image of me and they put it in front of a camera. So we're actually detecting if this is a real person, if it's a video. And we take that piece of information and we turn it into a vector. And basically, when you want to recover your wallet, we do that during onboarding. So the user comes in, he puts in his email, we authenticate his email, we ask him to scan his face, and then we back up his, his key share to his cloud in, in an encrypted format. Basically, when he recovers his wallet because he lost his phone or whatever happened, um, he, scan he downloads again the app, puts in his email, we verify that he has wallets with us, we ask him to scan his face, we compare the two scans, those two vectors, and if there's a match, uh, basically the wallet is, he's able to decrypt his key share from his cloud, and his wallet is restored. Um, this works. Okay. You know, yeah, I understand that. I, I'm, I'm just interested because, you know, you're, you're making a big point of using face rec. So I'm trying to understand where that tech comes from. Are you we're Do you using, have face yeah, yeah, we're using, we're using, using a company which it? is called Facetech for this. Okay. They're a market leader. So we've employed their technology in order to, to uh, we use their SDK in our servers in order to, uh, to build everything around facial biometrics. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And thanks a lot, uh, Luis. Uh, sorry, I sometimes call you Luis, sometimes call That's you okay. me. Yes. Um, uh, thanks a lot for your pitch. And uh, the rest questions, uh, you will go one by one uh, with investors who are interested to follow up, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. And you can stop your screen sharing. And right now, I want uh, to invite uh, another founder from Canada, uh, the founder and CEO at iHodl Life. Uh, uh, Tristan Schroeder. Tristan, mic is yours. Hi, everyone. Can you uh, hear me okay? Yes, very well. Okay, let me just share my screen. Can you see my, my screen shared okay? Yes. Oh, right now, perfect. Oh. Okay, wonderful. 
All right, fire away. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Tristan Schroeder. I'm the founder and CEO of iHuddle Life. Cryptocurrency is a lifestyle. And at iHuddle Life, we understand that. So we're dedicated to providing the best crypto merchandise, supplying cryptocurrency payment terminals for merchants, connecting consumers with crypto-ready businesses, and educating from beginner all the way up to certified experts because cryptocurrency and blockchain is the future. The usability of your cryptocurrency right now is a very big problem. Consumers cannot find businesses that accept it, so businesses in turn cannot access billions of dollars in crypto holdings. They wouldn't even know how to if they could. Storing and sending your cryptocurrency in an offline wallet is also a very big problem. Big, long alphanumeric addresses and tiny little screens that you can't even read, so it's very easy to make a mistake and lose your money. The biggest problem of all is the custody of your finances. It requires an intermediary, like a bank or an exchange, that charges you to secure, use, and invest your money, but worst of all, take from you the custody of your finances. And at iHuddle Life, we aim to change that by introducing to you the world's first smart hardware wallets and personal banking system, the world's first smart pay cryptocurrency payment terminal for merchants, the world's first ecosystem that connects the two, and the world's first branded cryptocurrency apparel line. Our smart hardware wallets with QR scan pay and NFC tap technology allow you to take your cryptocurrency out into the real world and utilize it the same way that you do your debit or your visa. With built-in military vault grade security, you're going to feel safe when you make a transaction. And the beautiful 2.8 inch color touchscreen display brings the user experience to a whole new level of simplicity. It's so easy to use that a child or an elderly person can use it. And paired with the all-new SmartPay cryptocurrency payment terminal for merchants, businesses can now accept cryptocurrency for their products and services instantly. With zero transaction fee and fast scalable deployment, consumers and businesses can now interact in true peer-to-peer -peer payments like never before. Our metaverse, home to a million experiences, connects consumers to a trusted group of crypto-ready businesses, and our brand gives you the opportunity to take part, feel, and live the iHodl Life lifestyle. Our target market albeit the world, is focused right now on Canada, a leading crypto nation looking to adopt cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies and already completed their test pilot for CBDCs. The cryptocurrency community, naturally, the businesses and retail merchants, consumer electronics and tech buyers, uh, current hardware wallet owners and entrepreneurs and investors, financiers just like yourselves. Our go-to market strategy, it cleverly rotates itself like a wheel. Our consumer connects to the business and our business connects right back to the consumer through our ecosystem. This creates massive benefits for our consumers. This also creates massive benefits for the uh, businesses, the merchants. It also creates massive benefits for our resellers. And this fabric now intertwined, the education process creates a massive benefit for all parties involved. Our business model is very straightforward. We take 50% profit on all of our products. We take a 1.5% transaction fee to consumers, a 12 and a half dollar monthly membership fee to merchants, and a 50% commission on all e-learning courses. Our traction so far is 150 units on Amazon in Canada a month. We have the most advanced hardware wallets on the planet. iHuddle Life is the world's first branded cryptocurrency company, and we are not at ideation. We are at turnkey ready for the next level. Our POS system is market ready. It offers branded cryptocurrencies. It is the world's first, and it already integrates CBDCs, which means it's pre-programmed to operate with government issued digital currencies once they release. Our projection by 2026 at best case scenario is absolutely ridiculous. Our normal case scenario is phenomenal and even at a worst case scenario, you can see iHuddle Life is positioned for a very profitable future for its business and its investors. When we take a look at how our competitors stack up to our hardware wallets, they just simply don't. Our, our wallets are so far advanced that it's not even fair. When we take a look at our POS system, our metaverse and our brand, all three become disruptive industry firsts in the crypto sector. The team behind it brings to the table over 75 years in experience in digital strategy, project management, e-commerce, blockchain, advisory, uh, technical analysis, and of course, cryptocurrencies. Our financials boil us down to an opportunity of $560 million in net profits by 2026 which brings us to our initial angel investment opportunity. We seek to raise $3 million, not to buy any runway because we're flying spaceships over here at iHuddle Life. We seek to raise $3 million to achieve $130 million in net profits over the next 24 months from our unit sales, our transaction fees, our memberships, and our e-learning courses. I thank all of you for your very valuable time today. I'm Tristan Schroeder, and I welcome you to the iHuddle Life lifestyle. Tristan, thanks a lot. You're thank you. You are really great in pitching and uh, 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 for other founders also, please uh, pay attention. This is really good, impressive pitch. Of course, sense is important, but all of you are strong here from this perspective, but also uh, how clear the pitch is, yeah? how informative it is. Uh, and uh, Poster child for crypto on the way. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, questions from investors, please. Asa, I see you un unlocked your, un unmuted yourself, sorry. Um, yeah, no, I. Um, it's interesting, it's really cool. And uh, we've got a Canadian on board um, who actually runs the venture side with me. Um, I've forgotten what my question was. I've unmuted myself, I've forgotten to mute myself again. But um, maybe you could just um, go over the team a little bit more. Whereabouts are they based? Are they international or Canadian? Uh, a little bit of both. So our team is uh, in Canada and also, oh, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to go so far, uh, and overseas. So obviously I am here located in Calgary. Uh, Ron Singh is the chief technical officer doing all the digital uh, fancy stuff behind the background, and he is also located here in Calgary. And Josie Rodriguez is personally uh, per currently located in Portugal and looking to relocate to potentially Canada or United States, uh, depending on where our, uh, our business ventures further. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I've actually forgotten what my main question was. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to come back to you on that. <laughs> no Thank problem, you. Sasa. Uh, okay. Other questions to Tristan? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious about uh, your claim about integrating CBDCs. Um, which CBDCs do you actually integrate? Uh, well, the... Uh, the project that we offer works offline. So it works through a Bluetooth signal, which means that it can actually use any cryptocurrency on the planet. So any CBDC that any government issues, uh, we could just program it in to operate through our API system. So, so all of them. Okay. But, you know, I, I'm a little bit of an expert on this. You know, like uh, CBDCs right now are, are, are in the infancy stage and they're cut across different uh, blockchain ecosystems. Right now, the ability to uh, translate between these different blockchains and private interoperability is actually a very, very challenging problem. So, you know, I think it's not so easy uh, to do what you, you claim at the moment. It depends What's on the fabric comment? that they're using. Uh, it depends on the fabric right. that they're using and where they're, lo where they're located. So, for example, in Canada specifically, they'll be using a government-issued digital currency that will be on a hyperledger interfabric. Um, what interfabric they're using it, whether it's going to be an XRPL, whether it's going to be a new one that's created, uh, you know, or whether it's going to be through the Stellar Lumens, which are probably the most potential ones in that area. We see Algorand making those kind of deals right now in, in the European sector, so we anticipate that's going to happen in the Euro sector. So, which company or which um, platform or hyperfabric that they use to transact the digital currencies, nobody really knows yet because it's not created or it's not stamped as a deal. But once it does, we'll be able to integrate that into our hardware wallets right now. Uh, any cryptocurrency could be integrated into the wallet and also into our payment system. Okay, so which blockchains are you actually integrated and have uh, compatibility with? I mean, it's not so easy, are, right? Either you're doing ERC-20 type, uh, you know, yes. that's why everybody Ethereum, right? So I assume you have that, but you're, 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 yes, you're we're, saying that we're compatible with Binance and that. Ethereum. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, BEP20 and ERC20 tokens. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Michelle, a very um, good questions. Stan, I see you unmuted yourself as well. Do you have questions? Oh. <clears throat> So, ah, if not, maybe I miss. No, no I, first, uh, from, I mean, it was very good pitch, uh, really, really impressive, uh, really good presented, but I didn't got the product at all. So I even didn't have no idea what this is. Uh, now I understand it's a, a hardware wallet, right? Uh, we have a hardware wallet so that users can collect cryptocurrency on their offline storage because I don't believe any online is safe. So you have custody mm -hmm. of your finances and it operates with NFC tap and QR scan technology, it comes with mm -hmm. software as well. So you can take it now out into the real world and you can tap and scan your cryptocurrency mm -hmm. the same way you do with your debit or your visa. That's what the wallet does. The mm -hmm. other hardware, software and hardware object that we have is the payment terminal for merchants. So just like mm -hmm. a debit terminal you see when you walk into a store, we have one mm -hmm. for merchants that interacts QR scan and NFC tab with our wallets and any wallet. You could have a Coinbase wallet if you want and scan and pay from that if you want. Mm -hmm. So it integrates very, very sim simplicity. And then the third product we have behind that is our, is our apparel itself, which is mostly just branding and marketing mm -hmm. and community, of course. No, thank you. No, uh, I just, uh, regarding the hardware wallets, um, I think you have uh, strong competitors, <laughs> but it's not, not uh, yes. nothing bad, of course, everybody has competitors. Uh, in terms of technology, Ledger has many, many years of uh, development behind this, uh, behind the shoulders. And uh, from the technology side, it's, uh, it's hard topic. I agreed to my colleague before, 
uh, to integrate and make this all cross chain uh, it's uh, it's hard it's really hard uh, what is interesting this pro uh, point of sales uh, product this is very interesting i believe that uh, mainstream adoption of crypto will come only if you have such point of sales in, in shops where you can pay with crypto this will be and i just an advice maybe you should work better on this one focus on this one because if uh, you pitch a um, hardware wallet and say that it's better than everything else and uh, with most features possible this is not not so um to people who are deep inside the topic it's not so really um uh, yeah I think once you see and use our hardware wallet, you'll have a very different opinion. Our hardware wallets are not just like another one that's a little better. They're so much better. Right now, all the kids are playing with an Atari and I'm about to drop a PlayStation 5. When you see it and touch it, you will understand clearly. And I'm happy to hop on a one-on-one -on -one okay. and show you the product and have you play with it. Very, very interested. So curious. Thank you. <laughs> you Thank you. I appreciate your time. Job. Thank you. Great job. Sorry? <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you, you very everyone. much. Uh, the, the rest questions you can discuss face to face uh, with interested investors and partners. And uh, uh, by, by the way, uh, this is also uh, the example you reminded me to uh, say uh, to all the founders here, if you see any potential in partnership with each other, uh, cross-marketing, products, R&D partnership. Also, let us know, and we will gladly introduce you to each other between startup and startup to build something together. So don't hesitate to do it. And uh, right now, uh, thanks a lot, Tristan, for your pitch again. Uh, and right now, I want to give the word to another founder of a great startup, Yango, uh, from United Kingdom, uh, the founder and CEO, Ian Mullins. Uh, yeah, and I hope okay, I. Yes. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. I need to, if you could stop sharing your screen, I could, uh, I can share mine. Yeah, Tristan, can you please stop screen sharing? Yep. Hey, cool. Okay. Yes, we see your deck. Great, excellent. Okay, cool. So the mic is yours. Brilliant. Thanks very much, guys. Um, I appreciate your time today. Yamgo is a profitable, rapidly growing company aiming to empower consumers to earn, spend, and save crypto assets. We're on a mission to make it easy for anyone anywhere to generate passive income streams and access financial services. Today, the existing banks, and to many respects, the existing neo banks, are failing to reach about 3.5 billion people in the world who have no access or very limited access to financial services. Now, the biggest challenges for financial inclusion are firstly, earning money. Many people need help to earn money. Uh, secondly, secure and easy access is a challenge, especially given the lack of ID or other documentation in emerging markets. And it's actually very high cost to deliver um, customers uh, a, a decent financial service, especially in rural areas. And ease of access and education are also very important challenges. So our solution is a wallet super app and monetization ecosystem that empowers consumers to earn rewards from their everyday actions, to easily spend directly from your digital wallet, or to save those digital assets. So to solve the easy access security challenges, we've built a completely new type of digital ultra low cost infrastructure. Um, we've got a vision for a new ecosystem for financial inclusion. We see a world where every click, every interaction, every usage, every request for your identity, recommendation or contribution or even consumption can be rewarded. Our Web3 model tracking platform and self custody wallets means that users can get instantly paid for their micro actions that they do whilst online. So our ecosystem consists of two brands. Adstax is the business services division, which mostly consists of uh, advertisers today, and our Yamgo, our B2C brand, which together they form the core of our ecosystem. And we use Hedera Hashgraph's HBAR as our main currency and public ledger. We've got a hybrid business model for consumers. It's freemium and viral, viral with subscription packages that reward users in crypto assets. For businesses, it's based on marketplace and software as a service fees. And today that's advertising and tracking campaigns. So we're not just a vision and an idea. We have traction and we've got customers. 
Since launching on the Hedera mainnet two years ago, we've done over 3.4 billion transactions. We do around 3 million every single day. Uh, last year, we tested our TPS uh, potential and we got up to seven, uh, 1,372, and we know we can go even higher. Um, we launched Yamgo a few months ago, um, and we've got already over 110,000 crypto users already signed up. Uh, last year, we made a profit of 110,000 on sales of 720K. Um, and our business ecosystem consists of around 50 websites with their code on page, enabling us to run e exclusive and unique rewards and tracking. Um, and that sort of that represents around an access to 10 million unique users every single month. We're currently the only company in the industry that's focusing on crypto, uh, DLT infrastructure and using advertising, digital ID and rewards um, as our main focus. So the board has got over 100 years experience in crypto, neobanking, fintech regulations, advertising and rewards. We literally have got one of the best uh, fintech founding uh, boards in the industry. I've recently put the team together, which includes Marcus Grubb, who's cu the current CEO of BlockX and a fintech expert in London. Um, Marcus Krebs is a current director of Revolut, the world's biggest neobank. Um, and Jason is also the ex-CTO of Woucher. So we've got all key angles um, that we're targeting covered. Um, I started my career in the city as an analyst and gained international experience in Canada, in Calgary, uh, before moving into mobile technology. And our board is very experienced and able su to support our growing team. We've got a proven track record to deliver high volume, high throughput, highly scalable uh, fintech solutions. We're currently recruiting for five more staff. Um, and we believe in summary that we can capture a large portion of the value and the discounted cash flows from global advertising, loyalty pers and personal finance sectors by creating a new standard that rewards and respects consumers. This is estimated to be around about 100 billion new addressable market in five years. We've got a unique route to market. We're expected to grow over 300% this year um, with profits exceeding uh, 500,000. Uh, this year. So we're very profitable. We're seeking 2.5 million to fund the acquisition um, of a further 1 million consumers and to scale our infrastructure. Any questions? Very good, Jan. Uh, very good pitch. Thanks a lot. Uh, Michel, I see you have questions. Yeah, I, you know, I'm very interested uh, in your advertising thing, but you didn't really explain it. The ad decks, uh, you know, B2B marketplace. Can you explain, you know, ex exactly how the ad uh, piece ties into your, uh, uh, sure. your, your um, uh, super app? Sure. Yeah. Today, if you go to AdStax, you can launch an advertising campaign across 50 different websites. So quite a few of them are in crypto and fintech um, it's spread across the world. Um, and you can launch a, an ad advertising campaign like you can on Google. The difference is that all of the data, every time a user sees a video, clicks a video, um, or we can have another data point, we can track that. It goes on uh, Hedera as a public ledger, and we can make a payable event based on every single tracking event or any digital event that we see. So you can launch a campaign, you can optimize it, and you can reach your audience, and then it's tracked on Hedera. That's where we started with AdStacks. We wanted to solve the problems of the existing advertising industry, having worked in it for the last sort of 10 years. Um, and we could see that, you know, every day people's data is being used, abused uh, every moment. And we can see that this is wrong. We want to put the consumer first. It's about time that the value is shared across the ecosystem. So we're firstly going to be uh, rewarding consumers for all of the advertising interactions. Um, and we've got, if you go to yamgo.com now, you can sign up and you can watch videos, download games, do answer surveys, sign up, recommend friends, and you'll get paid in HBAR today. And that's what our current user base is doing, and it's generating reasonable income as well. Who owns the data, the personal data? You, you as a set, Yamgo, as a well, as, the user, a... the user owns their own data. We facilitate an interaction between the business and the consumer. Um, it's the whole. The whole idea is every time a user's data is being used or their identity is being requested, there can be there is going to be a tiny micro payment made to the consumer. So that rewards them, that respects them. It's all opt-in data. If you can imagine the data that Google and Facebook have with, uh, you know, combined with the ten contextual information that we have and the opt-in nature, and we're gonna be rewarding consumers. We've got the same power potential from the data that Google and Facebook have, but we've got the user's permission and we'll be paying for that. And we can enable a brand to tap into that relationship directly with the consumer. And so we will disintermediate pretty much the whole of the existing advertising in industry by connecting the brand directly to the consumer 
by the wallet. So the wallet is like a product extension. Every time they interact with the product, every time they consume or make a little bit of coffee, if they could be bothered to connect the offline and the online, they can get a reward from that brand. But all of our stuff, mostly at the moment, focus on digital, digital events. Okay. So, and this is all commercialized, meaning this is actually working and generating. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah all, 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 all fully live right now and working. You can, you can go to AdStacks, launch a campaign. You can sign up to Yamgo now um, and, and have your non-custodial wallet and uh, start earning HBAR right away. Okay. Well, uh, consider me intrigued. Uh, I'll, I'll try to yeah. find you offline to find out more. Yeah, yeah it's brilliant. Do, do, do connect. I'd love to tell you more. Michelle, we will connect you with uh, Ian right after the session. I already wrote it down. Thanks a lot. And uh, Ian, people in the chat are also asking uh, if uh, it is available on uh, the web version or mobile app is also it's fully ready. Mobile web right now. We've, uh, we've got the Android release in private release and iOS is uh, slightly more challenging, uh, but uh, we expect it, that to be probably about another six weeks. We're on, I think, version three of our submission to iOS at the moment. So probably four or five and we'll get passed and get accepted. I'm sure you guys know all about the challenges of getting past Apple. Um, but uh, yeah, we need to add in a few more features to get the, uh, the uh, um, iOS app out. But Android, we will be featured. We've joined their FinTech program in Google and um, yeah, we'll be one of the featured apps when we go live and go live in the US um, over in the next couple of weeks. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Please, uh, please take care of the Apple users as well. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> take care of what, sorry? The Apple yeah, I, I mean, don't worry. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, take I'm care of the Apple users. <laughs> but the mobile web version and desktop version right. is already excellent. It's fantastic. We're getting lots of right. interactions. We got over over 110,000 people already, um, right. and every day we're getting you know uh, one or two thousand more people uh, signing up. So uh, you know we've got great traction already, and we're looking just mm -hmm. to, to fuel our growth really to in increase our infrastructure and our onboarding. Um, and we can already see our business model and revenue model and product customer fit working fantastically. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Lester, do you have any questions or only recommendation? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's fine. Uh, most of the points are being touched upon. I think, I guess I will just uh, mostly like to experience the, you know, the, the product itself as well as to also um, get to understand a bit more on, on how the, the, the race can contribute to the various aspects, you know, and yeah, and, and how, how, uh, in more details in that sense, yeah. Sure, I'd love the opportunity to, uh, to tell you more on a one-to-one. -one. Please do reach out. Yeah, yeah. We will gladly introduce yeah, sure. each other. Thanks. Thank you. So, Stan, I see you have question or you unmuted accidentally. No, no, I have a question. Uh, very interesting. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, what's uh, basically the revenue model or what are you raising? Are you selling your tokens or are you selling equity of the project? That's a, so that's a, very, that's a very good question. Uh, 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 we're, we're open to both. We have shareholder permission to, uh, to issue equity, but uh, obviously we're moving towards a tokenized ecosystem. Um, and I'll be delighted to tell you more about that. I'm a bit conscious this is a public forum and we haven't fully completed all of our token design, but um, there's an opportunity mm -hmm. for both token and equity. It's, it's on our roadmap. Great. But uh, tokens are outside. They are all, already issued and they are deployed uh, on blockchain. Our token, and... our token isn't issued yet. It's not minted or anything. We're, uh, we're actually at the mm. point of deciding which geo. It's UK, Malta, Gibraltar, Switzerland. Switzerland's top of the list because it's the, the global mm -hmm. uh, the, glo the, the global best uh, um, uh, regulatory environment. Um, but um, yeah, we, um, uh, I'll, be, I'll be keen to tell you more. Yeah, we are very interested can speak later and by the way revolut um uh so i saw one of your co-founders yeah. is connected from revolut are they uh, are they interested in your solution somewhere because uh, they <laughs> they try to grab everything from uh from the well, they don't, well put it this way they, they they don't have what we have um you know and we have one of their current directors on the board I mean, mm -hmm. you know, okay. Interesting. You know, who, mm -hmm. who, who knows what the future is, and uh, you know, it's uh, you know, th there's already clearly an exit route for us to be acquired by a neo bank, um, mm -hmm. a, a, a financial institution. Our focus is on helping customers to earn money and bank the underbank with a low cost infrastructure. 
Um, so we can reach consumers, you know, at a where uh, you know they just can't touch. They can't. They can't uh, deliver an experience. They can't deliver a bank-like experience or bank-like service to mm -hmm. really, really low, low-value consumers. As where we can, we've got super low-cost infrastructure. We can do transactions. We can enable them uh, to access financial services very cheaply, very easily, um, and that's what we open up. So when they're struggling, so when neo banks are struggling with their really, really high onboarding costs and cost of acquisition, we have a super low cost model. Um, so okay. we believe that we have a super, a, a great cost advantage, but the same reason why they may, someone may wish to acquire us early, we believe we can get to unicorn status pretty quick. We can get to a million active users pretty quick. It takes neo banks but, years to get there. Uh, we believe- I mean <clears throat> I mean, you shared uh, profit. Uh, you you shared that you get uh, also generated some profit. Yeah. Uh, but uh, th this is not the main uh, revenue stream, right? Because it's... you shared that you get the three billion transaction on, out of this only hundred ten k profit. It's not too much. It sounds like you. I mean, not not really. Well, no. Our What's ecosystem the... our ecosystem includes businesses and consumers, so we're not mm -hmm. just one sided. So. Businesses use us, to, uh, you know, essentially at the moment today for advertising campaigns. Very shortly, we'll be launching tokenized ad campaigns and branded collectibles and NFTs that brands can use or issue. You imagine the Procter & Gamble coin. They just, want to launch, <coughs> they just want to start with a collectible. Okay, we'll mint a million of them and put them out. So everybody who sees mm. your advert, everybody who interacts with your advert or everybody who buys your product, they can get one of your exclusive brandables and collectibles. The difference mm -hmm. with us is with other people who claim to mint tokens, we've got an audience, right? Mm -hmm. We have we have advertisers, uh, you know, we've got customers, we've got businesses that can put the adverts on. So we already have a fun fully functional ecosystem using HBAR. So you know, technically, we we can use another currency, hence mm -hmm. the potential to use our own currency in the future. Um, okay, and we have physicists on board, right? Because of HBAR, Say probably. Against me? You have physicists on board because of H bar, right? <laughs> yeah, we, we we've got a we've got a very uh, very talented team and a lot of rock stars. Uh, okay, you know, okay. I'll, I'll say that. But um, you know, Hadira is a, is you know I'm, I don't know if any of you guys have got an investment in in Hadira yet. Um, you, you certainly should. <laughs> it's okay, investment okay. advice. <laughs> very good, very good. No, it's uh, fine. Let's touch base later. Cheers. Thanks a lot for time. Thank you, Stan, and thanks a lot, Jan. Great pitch, and it seems that uh, you found today not only interested investors, but also interested potential users of your app and right. also potential partners. I see quite a number of messages in the chat, so uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, great job. Right. Cheers. So sign up now. Cheers. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Good founder. Always sell. Don't forget about these guys. Uh, yeah, and please uh, stop your presentation now. There you go. Perfect. Thanks a lot. And I want to invite another great uh, project from Poland. This time, the founder is uh, uh, Maciek uh, Shar. Don't don't worry about it. Uh, it's it's quite complicated. It's, uh, it's Shafarczyk. Shafarczyk. Yeah, perfect. Maciek Shafarczyk. Okay, perfect. And uh, the startup is Hololoot. So yes. Maciek, stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, let me share the screen. Yep. It works. Yes, I see it now. Perfect. All right. So, hello, everyone. Uh, so, I am Maciek, and uh, we are Hololoot, and uh, we are creating the first AR NFT generator and marketplace. And uh, our main theses are that uh, NFTs are obviously growing exponentially. Uh, but AR is an upcoming trend. Uh, and um, if you combine these two together, you have you know, a potential huge new category. But we believe that the reason it hasn't bloomed yet is because um, creators don't have access to scalable, easy to use, no code uh, generators. And this is exactly what we want to create. So um, we believe that AR NFTs are superior to classical NFTs. Um, there's uh, about uh, 100 billion devices uh, worldwide that are uh, AR ready. Um, but you still need technical skills to get into AR NFTs. So um, we've actually built a technology that kind of uh, eliminates this uh, technical need and it allows you to create AR NFT from any 3D model and all that's done in, uh, in seconds. So uh, our main competitor is VV. Uh, it's a centralized solution 
uh, that does not uh, enable platform creation. So basically, it's it's uh, it's, it's limited in its uh, range. Um, in regards to our business model, we have uh, five percent commission from every transaction that happens on the AR marketplace. Uh, we've been in the VR AR sector for about five years now, so we actually know how to uh, build it. And um, uh, our token will be the uh, payment option within the marketplace and staking it uh, in, uh, in, in turn will um, give you access to a premium uh, AR NFTs that we want to do in collaboration with uh, different uh, game studios, both classical game devs and NFT games. Um, so we are well on our way uh, with our roadmap. Uh, we started uh, the fundraise and we've gathered, gathered uh, around uh, $1 million at, at this point. Um, we will be launching our MVP soon. Uh, we've been working on it since January. Uh, most of it it's, uh, is, is done. Um, so our team has business, technical and research uh, skills. We have a dev team of four developers and a board of advisors, and we are about to introduce a, a CMO. Um, so we want to raise $3.35 million in total, um, and our initial market cap will be $580,000. 80% of the money raised will be used for product development and marketing, uh, because we actually want to build a um, sustainable uh, service that's a full-fledged uh, technology. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything. Um, if you want to you know, co-create with us uh, a new category of NFTs that uh, will uh, uh, boom in the upcoming years, then uh, you know, join our board of uh, VCs. And uh, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, then uh, I'm here to answer them. Thank you, Magic. Thank you. Great job and very well in time. A shorter than anyone else today, but very informative. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Asa, I see you have questions, so please go on. Yeah. Um, so have you got any demos of, of the game just yet or the NFTs that you'll be um, that you'll be using? Um, I'd be interested to see some demos of what you're Sure. Doing. I can I can drop you the links. Uh, and if you have an iPhone, I can also give you access to the app. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I'd be definitely interested in meeting with you awesome. uh, and your team. Um, the raise, you said it was 3.5. Um, oh, have, you three raised, have you raised any of your funds yet or, or are you uh, completely fresh? We've raised $1 million. Nice. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to ask some more questions offline if that's possible. Of course. I already can't stay waiting introducing you to each other. Uh, thank you, Asa. Any other questions from VCs uh, to Magic and Hololoot? Don't forget to unmute yourself, guys. Yeah, I can. I can continue. Ah, okay. Uh, send you. Thank you, Magic. Um, thank you. And Hololoot is, by the way, in our voting in our community. Ah, voting. yes. Today, yeah. Hololoot yeah. participates in the community voting for the next ideas on scale swap and performs quite well so far. So well, we have uh, a rather, sm rather small community, about a thousand people right now. So, you know, the amount of votes is not uh, as uh, high as we would have liked it to be. But, um, but it yeah. will be higher. It's all depending also on you, how you yes. present yourself, how you pitch, and it, it will be higher. Uh, most important to make people understand what's uh, really the advantage of the product. Yeah. And uh, as far as I understand, it's the first um, of its art, right? First of its art, uh, uh, 3D NFT. There is no other uh, solutions, right? Or the VR, other... VR, not 3D. Well, um... I, I, can, I, can, I can answer it. So kind of the, the, the general uh, idea is to take uh, either uh, existing 3D NFTs or bring um, non-blockchain 3D NF uh, 3D uh, objects into uh, into 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 the blockchain and then immediately convert them into AR NFTs. So this way you can have you know assets from uh, an NFT game like Lost Relics that is um, a part of the Engine ecosystem and we're official partners of Engine and you can have a bow that you use in a game as a trophy in your living area. Um, and uh, that's kind of like the first step. <clears throat> and secondly, we want to give uh, game dev users to also drop um, co comments um, 
AR, AR airdrops. So actually users can uh, you know pick a key that will can later be used in a dungeon in the game. So we kind of like connect you know reality with with metaverse. Um, and then eventually in the next year we want to um, go for the so-called location-based AR NFTs. If you actually go into uh, our um, Telegram, you can see, for example, you know, our community manager has, uh, you know, um, went to a city center in, in uh, Amsterdam and she has, um, you know, uh, um, superimposed a, a, a spaceship onto the town square. And you can imagine having a quest, you know, that you have to go to a certain location, collect a package from that spaceship and use it in the game. So, you know, we feel like there's a, a lot of potential in this uh, space and we're kind of uh, pioneers in this department. and. Uh, there is uh, the competitor that we've mentioned called uh, VV, but um, they have a centralized solution. So not everyone can really use it. It's just um, the brand that uh, VV is working with. And in our case, we kind of give a self-service solution. So people, so we have a cloud service and an AR app. So if you, you can access the cloud service, it's like Sketchfab. You put your 3D model there and it's sent into AR. You don't have to code. You know, all you have to do is either have a 3D model or create it. Okay, gotcha. Maybe I was not focused during your pitch, but I uh, didn't heard uh, this connection to games. And I believe this is the most important uh, part of the product. Fair that enough. You, Fair enough. Uh, that you can uh, make this um, 3D NFT out in the 3D games. This is this is a USP. Because, I will uh, uh, make uh, changes to the pitch deck then. Uh, mm. Not yeah, because uh, pitching in, in front of uh, a lot of investors, I'm going mostly for one-on-ones. So I would mm -hmm. definitely, you know, it's it's a lesson. Yeah, uh, all we learn it's all, all cool. But I mean, uh, making three D NFTs, it's not for everybody, right? But everybody's playing. Yes. And then in in the game, you have three D three D models, and then you can exactly. make this they NFT. Really and they, yeah, and this is this is the USB. This is very interesting. This is unique. Let's say so. Thank you. So thank yeah. you. The potential as well. Sorry, I was just going to say the potential for you guys as well to grow and include not just AR but maybe AI into your system and integrate that as well. Um, yeah. There's so many things we could potentially do. I'd love to discuss sort of collabs. I don't know if you're talking to anyone at the moment about um, what you're going to be building on top of these and not just leaving it as sort of a, a 3D AR, but potentially growing into AI as well. AI. Is that something that you're doing? Um, Maybe potential. I, I don't want to take too much time, actually, not Nelly. So you can tell me if I'm kind of going. Uh... Oh, no, it's OK. Maybe, don't worry. We can uh, uh, please, discuss uh, after. That's fine. Uh, don't, don't worry. So uh, Magic, first of all, yeah, please, uh, you can answer about AI opportunities. So are you planning to integrate AI into okay. your uh, solution? So so uh, we're not planning to integrate AI because we don't have the competencies yet, but we are we have built a machine learning uh, recommendation engine. So the plan is that if you have an NFT that is, for example, you know, a weapon from a game, then the recommendation engine will recommend you a similar thing that might be of interest to you from a game that you never heard of, but you like the style of the weapon, for example. And that way you can also get into a game. So we do have a recommendation engine. I wouldn't call it AI because AI, you know people who are from AI sector would, would kill me for saying this, but we are doubling with machine learning you know, that works with uh, Python and, and the databases. And I can also show you how it works in practice because uh, we've, we've also uh, applied this technology to the furniture sector. So in the furniture sector, we were uh, suggesting you know, um, a sofa that goes with a chair, for example, or a, that goes with a carpet and, and we have the tech for that build. But if you have an AI, uh, uh, you know, company that is, that would be interested in working with us, we, uh, we are also, you know, willing to, uh, to do Perfect. that. Magic, uh, thank you very much. And the last maybe question to you are from the community. They are asking, will AR NFTs created on Hololoot be available on OpenSea or other NFT marketplace? Well, um, uh, so um, the, uh, AR uh, exists on different uh, uh, marketplaces like the foundation, for example, but that kind of uh, AR is called web AR. So basically this allows you to um, 
only um, take the 3D model and view it in, the, in your living area. And uh, you can rotate it, move it, and that's pretty much it. And uh, the kind of, you know, um, uh, the, the, the main point of our infrastructure is the AR app that we kind of custom built. And it has a set of different functionalities. But um, yes, we don't want to uh, limit the users to just our uh, marketplace. Uh, the, they can be moved, uh, you know. So right now we're gonna start with um, Ethereum and Engine. Um, so the same assets that we are gonna have on the Hololoot will be available uh, available on uh, Engine Marketplace. But then we're uh, hoping to expand different uh, uh, providers like Polygon, for example, or um, go to Terra. You know, there's uh, many other uh, options. Okay, okay, perfect. Thanks a lot for your answers okay. and uh, your pitch. And I think the rest you can discuss uh, face to face on private mode sure. uh, with interested investors and partners. A great job. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Nelly. Um, and uh, uh, before, um, yeah, uh, right now I want to give the word to another startup, a startup from Ukraine named uh, Scotty Beam and the founder, Denis Smalini. Hi, Denis. Guys, hi everyone. Thanks, Nelly, for the intro. Uh, so let me share the screen. Let's start. Is everything okay? Yes, the stage is oh. yours. We see your screen. All is perfect. Amazing, amazing. I have so much to tell you guys. Uh, so let me introduce you to the Scotty Beam, uh, the world's first cross-chain NFT teleport. Uh, basically, what we do, we allow our users to uh, move their NFTs across the chains and uh, solve a lot of problems of the NFT industry we currently have. Because, uh, for example, you know that um, NFT guys currently are trying to operate in more than 10 chains. That's really insane and it's completely inconvenient for them because we have a lot of chains that are popular NFTs. I mean, uh, Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Solana, Flow, a lot of blockchains. And the key problem is that they are completely uh, not connected to each other. And all of the services, all of the marketplaces, all of the gaming projects also, they are absolutely limited by the opportunities of the network they use. Uh, even if we are talking about the biggest one, the Ethereum, we have the third problem here. We have uh, the community that, get, uh, that got absolutely no idea how uh, we can just, just figure out is the NFT original or not. Because for example, we can have uh, two crypto banks. The first one would be original issued by the uh, original guy, original company. And the second one would be just the copy pretending to be the same, pretending to be original and pretending to cost hundreds of Ethereum. And it's really crazy because um, several newbies in the NFT space can just buy it, spend a lot of money and got nothing, got just the, uh, the copy of the original one. So um, currently in Scotty Beam, we see these infrastructure gaps of the NFT industry and we would like to uh, solve it with, uh, with several ideas we came, we came with. So basically we have a first of its kind uh, cross-chain NFT teleport that would enable the interoperability, that would enable the metaverse ideas, and that would help a lot of projects and a lot of uh, people to, to live in the NFT industry. After that, uh, we have the cross-chain gallery and the peer-to-peer -peer exchange for the NFTs, because currently, um, no one, no marketplace have the uh, have this solution. They don't let users just to swap tokens. You can only buy token or sell token, and that's all. And it's kind of boring because uh, I see that um, all these collectible stories, like NFTs, like stamps, like coins, they are really based on the mutual exchange of the collectors, and it's really valuable. Also. Uh, we would like to provide the token validation tool that would be able to estimate the real price of the NFT that would be able to say, is it original or not? Because it's absolutely, um, it's absolutely um, needed by the network, needed by the NFT industry. 
Um, basically, currently we have the uh, teleport uh, product already live. Uh, we have it for the all EVM compatible chains. I mean, Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, um, Phantom, and a lot of other chains. Um, we enable uh, cross-chain swaps and auctions right now because imagine just you can sell your NFT not only on the OpenSea, but you would be able to sell it on all marketplaces, on all chains. And it's, uh, it uh, led you to um, get much more liquidity, much more uh, users, and uh, we see Scotty Beam as a real great uh, value-adding partner due to that. Uh, we have our own cross-chain oracles, decentralized system allowing us to uh, be in the all chains in the same time. Uh, also, we designed, we designed the Scotty Beam, the space astro hamster to make it really simple and fun for users. We have this uh, great interface we have uh, in the, our product and uh, the guys who uh, saw the Star Trek movie would get a lot of uh, warm uh, stuff about us, about this Scotty Beam, because he's really fun. Um, also, we uh, see Scotty Beam as the um, infrastructure tool, as the backbone of cross-chain opportunities for the NFT industry. And we are easily integrated with NFT marketplaces, NFT services, NFT games. Because um, why not? Everyone want to be cross-chain. Everyone want to be closer, be uh, bigger, be um, able to obtain more liquidity from the more networks. And I see that it's, it's, it's really cool. Uh, talking about the timing, all of us know that NFTs are booming right now. We have um, really some kind of craze of NFTs currently. Uh, we have a lot of new blockchains coming. We have a lot of new ideas about the NFT use cases right now. So I see that all of the stuff should be really uh, connected into some common standard uh, with the cross chain. Because uh, it's not be, it, it shouldn't be just the standard for Ethereum or standard for the Solana. It should be some common standard that we can uh, find out working together. Uh, talking about the size of the industry, I know guys that... Uh, 15 seconds left. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, that the sales are insane currently in NFTs and uh, we have a great interest from the community about that. We uh, have a great vision for the Scotty Beam, so it's not only the uh, NFT teleport. We have uh, a lot of ideas about the cross-chain tools, about the marketing integration, about the NFT validation. So yeah, it's really a lot of things I should share with you guys. Also talking about the product and roadmap, we already uh, delivered the two steps of the roadmap. We already have the teleport. We already have the um, NFT collection with utility value of Scotty Beam. And currently we are focused on the partnerships with NFT marketplaces and NFT gaming solutions also uh, to allow them to become cross-chain, to bring their collection to all chains, issue tokens in any chain, promote it on any marketplace, enable the cross-chain swap and auctions. Um, also, uh, we have the great utility idea about the Scotty Beam token. Uh, we would have uh, several fees uh, for our services and we'll, it, it would be paid in the Scotty tokens. We would uh, obtain it and we'll burn 90% of all the fees in the BIM tokens. Also, we would uh, we have a lot of uh, ideas about the incentive, inc community incentivization of the token and about the uh, NFT collection utility value. Yeah, Dennis, right now, unfortunately, yeah. I have to hard stop you because you sure, already sure. overcame the time on one minute. It's unfair for other uh, participants. Thank mm -hmm. you for the pitch. Uh, but later on, let's uh, reach out uh, with our, our team uh, to help you to uh, improve the pitch a little bit because uh, a good project, but uh, the pitch could be more dynamic and uh, exposing your um, advantages. Okay. Uh, yeah, please, questions from investors. 
Alex, you kept silence today. Ah, you unmuted yourself. So yeah, actually, uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for this speech. Uh, project looks really interesting. Personally, me and our fund really like bridges and bridges bridges for uh, NFTs. Uh, always look uh, super promising. Uh, my question was about your evaluation. Uh, and uh, could you please just uh, step back to the previous slide? Uh, yeah, just to mm -hmm. let us calculate it a bit. Yeah, yeah, of course. So currently we have uh, the 1.45 percent of initial circulating supply on the TGE. We have the TGE planned in the uh, late uh, October or early November, and we have three networks to launch our tokens and to launch our NFTs. So yeah. I can share the um, whole tokenomics with you after this uh, event. So we have everything absolutely um, described and uh, yeah. Good. Yeah. We'll be glad to introduce you. Uh, Alex, Thanks. do you have other questions? Uh, yeah, uh, I see you have hard cap on this slide. Uh, does it mean you plan to fundraise this sum and uh, if it's hard cap, what's your minimum cap? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Great question. So we have the hard cap right now um, around 4.8 uh, mils, and we have the soft cap for the 3.9 mils. And the uh, idea of the uh, this evaluation is uh, the cross chain tools. We have a lot of uh, things to do, and we have um, a lot of uh, infrastructure to work with us, I mean, the decentralized Oracle infrastructure because um, it's really important to make it decentralized, to make it secure and to make it, uh, to stabilize its work. Okay, and as a gut, uh, you have already finished uh, the first two steps of your product development. Uh, did I get you correct? Uh, it means you already have some integrations between some chains. If uh, yes, uh, what kind of chains uh, do you already support? Mm -hmm. uh, we already support Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon. Uh, we can support any chain that is EVM compatible also like Phantom, like Hobiaka chain, anything. Uh, so currently we are working hard on integrating the Solana and Flow uh, standalone blockchains because they have a lot of NFT users and great NFT projects also. Okay. Do you have kind of schedule for new chains integrations or do you plan to organize it in a uh, uh, governance uh, format when your community, your users, your investors will vote uh, for next chains, which will be integrated? Uh, we we uh, know the uh, most popular NFT chains. Uh, for now, we know the uh, most prominent products on this chain. So we would like to add just the uh, top uh, NFT networks uh, to our product. And uh, we would like to make uh, our users able to uh, connect their NFTs from uh, every valuable and from every uh, great chain. Uh, so, yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you for the questions. Thank you, Alex, for good questions. Any other questions to Dennis? I see also the question from the community from the chat. Uh, Dennis, you mentioned that you are going to launch IDO at the end of October, beginning of November. Do you have the platforms reserved? Uh, yep, we are negotiating with the negotiating with the platforms. I'd like to have as much NFT guys as I can, because uh, currently Scotty Beam is focused on the NFT communities, and we would like to reach the uh, NFT launch pads like NFT pad, like Game Station and others. So, uh, yeah. But uh, not confirmed yet, right? In negotiations, that is what I heard. Uh, I mean, uh, we've negotiated, but uh, of course I can't share the concrete date because we didn't sign the, the agreement okay. and so on. But okay. the, uh, the date is yeah close to that. Answer accepted. Uh, any other questions to Dennis? Yeah. Let's yeah, actually, actually, yeah, actually uh, coincidentally, um, you know, our team, we were actually evaluating Scotty Bing yesterday, we internally. Really? <laughs> yeah, because, because, we, because we, we, we somehow, uh, some magical birds just whisper, whisper to us and we got some information and we're just evaluating internally. 
So uh, it, it's good to uh, see you here, uh, Dennis. So, thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that definitely, uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, there are a couple of launch pads that you may need to speak to, right? Uh, with regards to NFT, maybe gaming stuff. And uh, you mentioned Game Station as well, but as far as I'm aware, Game Station isn't launched yet. So uh, they are uh, having their own IDO themselves. And I think, uh, are you are you kind of exploring the probability of um, be, becoming one or the first or the second, you know, IDO on their own launch pad? Is that something that you actually plan to in terms of strategy wise? Yeah, of course, we would really like to. Let me just answer in this way, because until yeah. uh, the everything is signed, I can't share it, but yeah, we, we would really like to. Yeah, yeah, because uh, the, the reason I'm asking is because, uh, uh, I mean, Nelly will, will know that I'm pretty much uh, connected to quite a number of uh, launch pads, and, and I, I, I know how they operate. So uh, when you mentioned Game Station, I was wondering about, are they just uh, going to do their own IDO, right? So, so yeah, it, it makes sense if you want to target to be the first or second uh, IDO after them, then uh, to kind of uh, uh, gather the hype, right? Right after their own launch. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's cool. And uh, I think uh, you guys uh, have a kind of an equal vote within my team, you know, to, to yeah, 50 50 almost. So uh, I, I probably can speak to you as well, you know, to see uh, whether there could be any kind of uh, synergy and how we can actually uh, help you out with a couple of other launch pads that we are close to as well. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'm super happy to hear that. And this is really cool coincidence that you are evaluating yourself internally. Uh, glad that you could, uh, uh, maybe it helped you also today to understand the project better. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your chance. Stan, you also have a question or comment. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Dennis, for the pitch. Um, well, it was very long, but essentially... <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, what you are offering is the bridge for NFTs, right? Uh, let, let's let's in simple words. Uh, uh, talking really simple, really simple have, in one sentence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've improved the bridge technology, so that's why we called it the teleport. It's a bit better than bridge because we don't uh, create a lot of wraps of the tokens like bridges do. Mm -hmm. We have only one representation of the token in uh, some chain, and that's all. So you shouldn't rely on all of the bridges you use if you are using the uh, Scotty Beam Teleport. Clear, clear, because it's your bridge. <laughs> Therefore, you uh, need only one representation. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, interesting. Uh, I think uh, such kind of product is interesting for NFT space. And uh, if you don't mind, we can have also discussion for scale swap. Uh, of course, the of idea course, on sure. scale swap, possibly. Let's uh, let's connect after. For sure. Thank you. Details. Thank you very much. Perfect. Happy to hear that. Probably you found not only investors here, but maybe reserved uh, also a lunch, a great lunch pad. <laughs> Would be happy to do that. Okay, good, Dennis. Uh, so uh, the rest uh, you will discuss face-to-face uh, -face, uh, with uh, interested parties, okay, after the uh, yeah. session. And uh, last but not least, definitely for today, is uh, the startup Rocket Capital from Singapore, where Lester is based right now, and uh, the founder, Davide Capotti. So, yes. Okay. Thank, thank you. Ja you see my screen? Yes, yes. Uh, just one second, let them the presentation. Okay. okay, now it looks good. Okay, so thank you so much. Thanks so much for this invitation. I'm the founder and CEO of Rocket Capital Investment. So what is Rocket Capital Investment? It's a fresh financial institution, just licensed and regulated by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. And so we have headquarters in Singapore. Our mission basically is to overcome the old centralized asset management model, proposing a modern portfolio theory based on the idea of gamify the forecasting of the market with a decentralized and distributed machine learning tournament. Let's go to the problem. So most hedge funds have basically identical structure and investing approach. You know, it's a kind of copy past. 
I've been a institutional portfolio manager, manager for 10 years, and I was a witness of this critical point from inside, you know. So basically, quants compete each other to receive money to allocate on the market by the fund manager. Because if they have money to invest, they can earn profit and bonds. So to achieve this goal, what they do? They push to create a very promising backtesting model that usually never work on live trading. This uh, situation decreases the accuracy of the models, decreases uh, uh, lower the variety and the originality of the, the prediction itself to a point where the models are almost the same one, often useless. That's why, because 5,000 funds shut down in the last five years. And also, people, fund team are often but they're made by five to seven, seven people, you know, very small, very small team. How, to, how is possible to create a solution for that? So Rocket overcome this model, proposing a decentralized and distributed competition. So one day we thought, what is going to happen if we give to all the data scientists all over the world the ability to download our data set because we work on data set to create machine learning models and train their model on it. So in our proposal, data scientists can free download data set, train models and submit prediction in a pseudo anonymous way, thanks to the IPFS blockchain that we, the link to IPFS blockchain that we created. The pseudo anonymous way is also very interesting because potentially the data scientists of JP Morgan or BlackRock will join the competition in a hidden way, you know, and uh, put the same algorithms works on our uh, infrastructure. So with this uh, proposition, Robert uh, Rocket is able to scale uh, the workforce from five people, seven people, 2,000 of data scientists. And this helped our hedge fund to, to boost variety, originality, and trading performance as well. So how does it work, this, uh, this system? You know, every week, data scientists can download the data set, uh, train the models, make submission. We take submission, we encrypt and store on blockchain. And only at the end of the week, we decrypt to create a leaderboard. So basically, based on the ranking, on the ranking position that a data scientist have, they are paid with our proprietary token, our reputation token that is called Musa. It's a jellyfish logo. I don't know if you have seen. Um, so to let you know, Rocket Competition is already running on Polygon. It's a layer two solution because we have a lot of submission and a lot of transaction to pay data scientists, you know, so we need to scale on layer two as well. And now we are uh, dropping Musa token to the best selected uh, top ranked data scientists on LinkedIn. We are onboarding. So if we have uh, data scientists uh, online, please come and join enjoy the, the rocket competition. And uh, we will drop to the best one our, uh, our tokens. So uh, just back one second, it is a win-win because data scientists can earn money for working in a distributed, a decentralized way. And also they can build a tamper-proof reputation as a data scientist. On the other side, it's a win for us because we get the prediction and we create a super intelligence that we use it inside our fund. So this is all. I mean, Rocket Capital offer investment fund related to the cryptocurrency market. We are a fully regulated financial institution the only one in the world with a decentralized distributed intelligence, and we don't have management and performance fee. This is the team of teenagers that we have. Almost they are all teenagers. So I'm joking, but we have people with a lot of time, years of experience, an engineer, aerospace engineer, uh, informatics, PhD, uh, a professor of university, you know, and uh, data scientist, blockchain architect. So it's a team is, uh, as I said, is uh, rocket science. And uh, so we did a lot of things in the last two years, you know, from establishing the company to granting a license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore to building a very sophisticated product um, related on blockchain IE. We also went through a seed round in March, March 2021. Uh, we raised uh, 550,000 euro for 9% of the share at 5 million evaluation. And uh, in front of us, we have a, a many, and we are uh, um, starting the competition. On Monday, we start the competition. So the DAP is 
completed, created, everything is uh, already running. So uh, next week we will pay the first weekly payout uh, with our uh, tokens, you know? So we are not building, we already built and we have to improve. Uh, we have a lot of uh, things to do in the future, you know? We, we want to become the most dis distributed and decentralized fund in the world. In my opinion, I want to scale the technology to become a decentralized, you know, DAO, decentralized autonomous organization. I was thinking of creating a decentralized autonomous financial institution because we want to be fully regulated, but to scaling up the technology to the limit, you know? So what we are offering, we are offering our uh, Musa token and uh, the Musa token fuel um, all the entire system. They are used to participate in the tournament, to get reward, to stake, to earn interest, and as a grant for developer. And also, we use the uh, Musa token to pay our operation because we, as you said, in our fund, we don't have management fee because we have a reserve of Musa token that we use on that. Just that one, we have uh, um, one competitor, one big competitor in the market is Numerai, is a very strong one. I, I love this company, but they are not transparent. They are not decentralized. The market cap or uh, Numerai is 500 million. And uh, um, they are an edge fund that is close to, to third party investor. Uh, the re rewarding model is not transparent. And uh, so we are better than them in some way. And also our competition being decentralized and distributed could be uh, implemented to run thousands of different competition. Not only the rocket one, but also putting us in a position to be a decentralized marketplace like a Kego, decentralized Kego. Thank you so much. I hope that you enjoy the proposal and I waiting for you to partner together. Thank you, Thank you David, for your pitch. Uh, uh, it can be improved further, uh, but uh, yeah, sure. I think you're a good job. Uh, and uh, I think you are the first uh, startup, at least uh, on my memory, uh, while talking about competitors, saying, yeah. I love them. <laughs> So. I love them. We, I started from them, you know, because you have to study the competitor, you have to understand from inside what is working or not. I love competitors. Okay, got ya. So, please, questions <laughs> or comments from investors uh, uh, for Rocket Capital. Yeah, so I'll start. I mean, I think the concept is clear, right? Your basic crowd sourcing and decentralizing this and uh, putting kind of like a prediction market kind of overlay on top. Uh, you know, I think the, de the concept is, is clear, but the devil's in the details. Like, how are you ranking these guys? Because, I mean, ma the stated problem that you have is the fact that these uh, data scientists overfit. Right. And, and yeah. they play games. Yeah. And so so basically they're, they're back testing on small data sets. And, and I imagine that's how you're ranking these things. Right. Based off of past data yeah. and this sort kind of thing. So how do you how do you do the sophisticated thing uh, to be able to uh, properly choose the winners? So basically uh, they can uh, download the data sets or so training models and whatever they want, you know, but um, their ranking is based on uh, live market, you know? So uh, basically we give the data set on Monday and uh, we close the competition on Monday. Uh, at the end of the week, we saw what's going on on the 400 assets they asked them to predict, you know? And we rank them based on a score function that is a formula is public on, on our website, you know? That uh, they rank them uh, based on their ability. So with the delta between what happened in the real market what they predicted one week ago okay so the rank is very simple to do that and also is um, is uh, we are giving the data scientists the instrument to download everything and to check it by themselves you know so is uh, uh, they could have the um, possibility to check the leaderboard uh, just uh, running a jupyter notebook is the governance like the the, the ranking algorithm Right? Who determines that? Is that just you guys as a centralized uh, uh, team of experts? Is that somehow decentralized and have governance functionality that can evolve the algorithm based off of the preferences of the you know, market participants? How does that work? Yeah, so uh, basically the, the scoring function right now is, uh, uh, is public. So um, we can, right now the, um, the ranking is made, uh, is centralized. Okay, so we do, 
the the ranking and we publish and we can uh, we can show them that uh, the the competition is fair. But on the next implementation, we want to that our uh, smart contract do all the job. You know, so the idea the uh, the final stage of the idea is to have uh, an autonomous organization where you have prediction and you have uh, um, oracles that co collect, connect to the uh, data market. They, um, they, they make the calculation of the formula inside of the smart contract because it is possible and they automatically uh, make the payout to the, to the wallets, you know, because uh, the data scientists on board with their, their wallet. Uh, this is a, a second step because uh, we have to firstly understand smoothly how does it run, you know, we have to understand uh, also if this kind of uh, question that we are uh, targeting to the data scientists makes sense or we have to change to another kind of question because in the forecasting the market, you can forecast the prices, the volatility, uh, the uh, diversification between assets, uh, the correlation, you know, so it's important to understand what is, bet what is the best question to ask the data scientist because on the other side, we use uh, all the prediction to aggregate uh, models in a collective intelligence that we use to run the fund. So we have to have uh, bigger evidence of, uh, of the result that we collect from the, from the submitter. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, thank you, David. I think the rest questions you can go through uh, in private mode. Uh, just a reminder, uh, we will send uh, to all and every investors all the startup profiles uh, of uh, the startups that we're pitching today. And uh, I will ping you many times before uh, I get your feedback on each and every one and uh, make an introduction, of course. And before we finish today, uh, I want uh, to ask uh, the question uh, from <coughs> investors. Guys, please, can you give one feedback or advice uh, for the startups that we're pitching today and for others that are and will be watching us on YouTube and LinkedIn? Um, what... Uh, what uh, core mistake did you notice today? What could be improved uh, to ensure that uh, the projects will um, have better uh, traction uh, from the fundraising perspective when they talk to investors like you, professionals? Um, I may as well kick off. Um, I think definitely the enthusiasm. It, it comes to us that people know, obviously, what they're talking about. But in terms of enthusiasm for, for the token that you're creating and the project that you're running, that's definitely where it lies um, in my team anyway. We look for the pedigree behind the team. So it's very important to see, you know, what you've done in the past, what you've been, um, what you've been commended for and, and, what, and what you're producing. It's, it's very important for us to know that your longevity in this space is uh, coming across. Perfect. Burning eyes and uh, uh, very hot heart, right, uh, Asa? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if if the if the project's not got any enthusiasm, then need review. Doesn't matter what the project is. We we all have a fantastic idea comes you know to us once in a while. But if you can pitch it in the right way and you can get um, people's enthusiasm to to ask you questions and be intrigued about what it is you're designing, that that's a talent. It really it doesn't come naturally, and you do have to meet with millions of VCs before you can um, you can do that naturally. But I'd say definitely the passion uh, for your project is key. Perfect. I love this advice. Thanks a lot, Arsa. Uh, Michelle, Lester. Yeah, yeah uh, I think in general. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, you go. Go, go ahead, go ahead. No worries. Go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. So I, I was gonna say, just uh, you know, I, I see lots of different projects, and basically, I'm a little bit more technically oriented. So I, you know, when when uh, a lot of these projects make uh, the, the uh, claims, they need to really kind of uh, drill down a little bit into the detail to be able to substantiate the claims, either because. Uh, there, you know, it doesn't have to be that the, it, the technology is done in house, but you know, if it's, uh, you know, uh, being licensed or there's it's being co-developed or things like that. Enough detail such that we understand what the 
uh, strategy. So I think so, you know one of the um, uh, uh, pitches today uh, made made some pretty serious claims about the hardware wallet, and you know uh, it's hard for me to DD that, right? I, I accept it at face value, but it's kind of hard to be able to say yes they have something or not if the detail isn't underneath to be able to, for, for me to be, be able to assess it, right? So I think enough detail such that uh, you can make the claim more credible, uh, that would be very strong to back up uh, yeah, your, your, your thesis. Yeah. Perfect, you mean meat, meat about traction, about uh, what is really behind, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, like you have five minutes, right? So you can't have like five slides on, you know, technical, whatever, right? You have to you know, talk about the vision and everything like that. But I think uh, this is a little bit of art when you talk about the pitch, you got to drop in enough detail, either because you have a very credible team that has done this in the past, then I kind of go, okay, I believe that, right? Or, or you have a, a of technical partner, or you have some innovation, uh, you know this kind of thing. So, but you need to have a little bit of substance behind it. Otherwise, it's 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 uh, you know the, I think a lot of people will will uh, just pass because they're filtering through a bunch of stuff, uh, and you want to hook them and be like, oh, okay, this sounds very credible, and then I want to follow up with these guys afterwards, and I'll go the dude the the extra mile and the DD to figure out what uh, whether you guys are really uh, got you know got the horsepower behind what your your claims are. You know? Very strong point. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Uh, Lester, what did you want to share? Yeah, I think just to just to add on, right? I think uh, like to, to what, what what was mentioned earlier, to have a uh, some uh, sustain, substantial uh, proof, you know, or uh, maybe some some links to any kind of uh, you know, materials for us to refer to whenever we want, so that we'll be able to check out whether your claims are valid, right? As it is, because. Uh, you can always claim that you are the top number one, number one, <laughs> number one guy in this area. But how are we to know whether you are the real number one, right? So at least give us some some uh, credentials, give us some uh, tools, you know, uh, links for us to check out to ensure that uh, we're able to 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 check the validity. And uh, yeah, so 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 that that is the addition. And I think another thing for uh, the newcomers for the other sessions, right, would be to probably uh, rehearse a little, uh, it's only five minutes, right? So just rehearse a little on your page to ensure that you keep within the five minutes, you know, in, instead of overrunning and you, you don't get panic, right? <laughs> within these five minutes time. And I think uh, one, one last thing will be to, you know, like uh, for also for the newcomers as well, will be to uh, at, at, at least uh, do, do, some, do some research, you know, on the VCs who are attending the sessions. And, and also drill down into maybe uh, which are the ones that you probably want to speak to, you know, or maybe uh, what are the light, the likes and uh, don't likes, you know, of any of these uh, VCs. Then that, that will also help you to uh, drill down into the content that they may be looking for as well. Yeah, that's it. Lester, that's really cool point. And uh, this research is uh, always uh, uh, very often lacking, but uh, it's a necessary thing, of course. Uh, know your customer and know your investor, of course. So great point. Thanks. We should elaborate more on this. Uh, Alex, anything you want to share? Yeah, uh, I do believe, uh, at least from our perspective, and uh, I think a lot of other um, colleagues, other investors will be super thankful if projects uh, can uh, really pay the attention during the pitch to what kind of innovations they bring to this market. Because right now there is so many projects and it's so uh, sweet and sometimes so easy to focus on uh, details on product vision and so on, but it's really uh, super thankful for investors and super good and useful for projects to highlight what kind of value the, uh, uh, what kind of innovation they have, what kind of innovation they uh, want to bring to the market and what kind of value they want to bring and they can bring to the community because right now crypto industry is literally powered by community and always uh, super happy to uh, get now and to hear uh, in what well your project will contribute to the community, what kind of problems uh, project and uh, founders are going to solve. Mm -hmm. So proving real life problems, existing problems and not imaginary ones, right? Yep. 
Amazing. Thank you very much, Alex, for this advice. And a short advice or comment from my side to all the entrepreneurs here. Uh, you know that all the VCs uh, here today are really great active VCs, many times verified by many uh, mutual deals with uh, in mind and our partners and uh, never noticed in some dumping or whatever activities. Uh, so uh, we are really carefully uh, selecting those with whom uh, we work for the deal flow exchange. And I know that uh, since uh, we are doing it also for educational purposes, uh, live streaming in YouTube, and LinkedIn, uh, a lot of uh, other VCs, uh, they are watching not only from in mind network, but also from the market in general, they are watching the sessions. And from a couple of last sessions, we noticed that a lot of founders were noticed, uh, were contacted uh, by investors uh, from the market. It is good, it is great, but be careful, always be careful and always look at with what VCs you are talking. Uh, especially it is relevant for the crypto and blockchain market because uh, there are a lot of different players. Uh, some of them with great reputation and some of them can even potentially harm the project. So just uh, telling you, be careful and always check, especially if it is the contact who is reaching you out uh, uh, themselves uh, uh, from the internet, uh, be careful before signing any deal. You can always uh, ask uh, us or other investors about uh, some of the market players, okay? Uh, I hope you will remember about this. And I want to say big, big, big thank you to all the VCs today. I'm already preparing to write you and start the first introductions. And thank you for all the founders. You made great job. And my special thanks to Abdul Rahman, who is venture analyst at InMind, uh, living in Sri Lanka and get, getting this great job, uh, helping us to uh, create this session today and uh, select uh, the right startups. So thank you everyone uh, who was here with us today. And let's go and follow up for the deals. Good luck thank with you. the deals and with the project. Bye -bye. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It was a pleasure. Thank you.